and get the winning victim. Oh, yeah, I'm not camera. No, 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 yeah, what's your story? What's what's your well, story? Mine started years before. I, I seen her at a at a Red Cross ball up here when she was about fifteen or sixteen. Okay. All on cameras, is it? No. Bloody <laughs> hell. Am I allowed to show my bare feet? Well look, it's just your head there. Oh yeah. So um, oh, yeah. and where will I be? I'll be I can be here. I can be anywhere I like. And yeah, of course yeah. we want a few North Coast tales and <clears throat> where you're from, when you first got here, you know, blowing up stumps, old time dances, whatever it is you want to talk about. Yeah. So long as it's when you're in Northcliffe. Uh, blowing up stumps. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you ever blew up stumps. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm yeah. You could just go and get, go and get the explosive and that sort of thing. You, you, I think you got a, uh, had to get a permit or something. <laughs> and, but you just went and got whatever you wanted. Yeah. And you mix her up, and and then they decided to change the, change it that you couldn't just mix it with diesel, and some dangerous people mixed it with petrol, but they were, luckily there was no accidents caused through it, but it could have done. And, uh, and things like that. And I think that was the thin edge of the wedge as far as changing changing things that make it more difficult, you know. And plus, explosives were uh, like uh, when the... When the uh, when they started using it to bomb places and park big bomb vehicles and that sort of thing in, in, the, in the world. You know. Oh, in the world. Yeah. yeah, and that that sort of made it difficult for us. Yes, but that was uh, that was later when we blew stumps. Before we used to burn them, cut them down the dead trees on the paddocks. We'd cut them down, dig round the stump, dig dig round, you know, so all the wood was below ground level. Yep. And then we'd roll the logs, the first couple of billets of logs off the, the, off the tree after we'd cut it down. We'd roll them against the stump and then, then get, pick up some wood and lighter and we'd do a whole big area, you know, 50 acres. There might be 200 stumps in it. And you'd light it all up on one day and then within a week or 10 days, it was all gone. Right. You know? And were they ring bark stumps or stumps? Yeah, ring bark trees. Yeah, dead trees that have been ring bark. We just had Glenn Smith in here. Yeah. He was saying that the just before you, and he was saying that the last tree, the last ring bark tree from nineteen, he reckon twenty six, twenty seven, had just fallen down last year. On his place. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie. We've still got odd ones. Yeah. Yeah, we've still got. We've got uh, jarrahs that were ring bark then. I should say this is Robert Daubney. They've got a, a big farm down the end of Middleton Road, or where would you say it is? Uh, Mural Up Road. Mural Up Road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, around the, the junction of Bashford and Middleton Road. Yep. Uh, you know, the T Road there, is what used to be called Leverton's Corner. Yep. That was where the, the, Scot, the Scotch Scotties, when they were here, you know, on the Scotch group, yep. they used to meet at Leverton's Corner. Yep. And that was where they had their, their meetings, all about what, were the, what was going on. And they'd always finish up with a couple of fights. A bit of a, that was how they settled things, the Scotties, Fun. with fights. Yep. Like one time there was four of, four of them came in and there was five cows, like the government used to deliver these heifers and that. And there was five cows and there was four people. And the extra one, he wanted it and he wanted it. And they said, right, we'll, we'll, well, I'll fight you. we'll fight for it. Yeah. And over and over in the gravel and the one that didn't get up, 
he was the one that missed out. The other bloke got took the cow, extra cow. It was just they sorted out. Everybody shook hands. And they were quite happy. Wow. I suppose that's how they did things in Scotland too. You know, well, most of them were miners. Some of them were fishermen, but they were pretty rough and tough. But that was before my time. Right. Yeah. So your time. When did you get to Northcliffe? Oh well, I was born in 1946. Yep. I'd be the youngest of the second generation, you know, because my parents were twenty. My mother was twenty, and my father was twenty-four when he came here. Then, then they had one, one, my oldest daughter, sister. They had in England, and my mother came out a year after my father, you know, like, mm -hmm. and they never ever paid to come out here because Dad worked for the, the, on the estate that was owned by the owner of the shipping line. Well, that's convenient. And everybody else paid so much, 50 pound or 40 pound or whatever it was, but the, they never ever got a bill because of that. And you wouldn't think in those days when all these people were moving that they would be able to single that out. No computers or anything like that to, mm. to you know, or telephones, mm. you know. Well, I suppose there was telephones, but not, you know, as so such. When, when you got to Northcliffe, when did, was, when did the first telephone arrived, arrive? Oh, well, yeah. they had, oh, they had party lines and they had, uh, they had, I think Bashford's next to us had had a phone a bit earlier on. I'm not certain of that though. And would you just pick it up, dial it, and then go? Yeah, ask. Who do you want number. to? You yeah, ask yeah, no. yeah. Um, Cecile on the other end. You know, who do you want to talk to? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. do you say? One three, like a three-digit number. Oh, they'd call. You know, number please, and you just write, you just call out the number, and yeah. or if you couldn't remember the number, you'd say the name of the bloke you were trying to ring locally. And, They'd just plug you through, yep. and uh, yeah, yeah, she was a. That was you just wind the handle, yep. and then it got really technical, and you had to dial the number, you know. Mm. <laughs> After a while, and yeah. did you? Was it straight into cows, or was there anything else in between? What for you, dairy? Did you? Oh, we started off dairy, and then we went into a few beef. Uh, with our first lot of beef, we like baby beef, like reared on the cows, was in about 1952, 53. Before that, we used to run steers on, on some of the blocks that had been abandoned, you know? Mm. And uh, uh, like when the group settlers left, there were still paddocks cleared, but there wasn't a lot of grass on them, but it would carry a few animals. Only trouble was they had uh, they ran out of copper. Off the soil. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah. There wasn't a, uh, there was a shortage of copper, and and you had to make sure they had uh, what they called Denmark lick. It was a salt. Yeah, lick. A, a copper and cobalt mixed together, and a few other minerals, and a yep. so, in a salt lick. Yep. It was a red stuff that, oh, you get it, you could get. It would just go all over you, you know, if you're putting it out and it was dusty. Right. But the cows would eat it and it stopped that copper deficiency. Right. And do you, on your block, was it um, carry loam it was or was it more sorts. sand? No, carry loam. Uh, the best, I'd say the best land was the, the red gum carry country. You know, the carry loam needs a lot of maintenance. It'll, because it's not, not, uh, uh, it relies on being soft, and as soon as you make it into pasture, it gets a hard, uh, it, it packs, you know. Yeah, compact. So you've got to break, but hence it'll grow beautiful potatoes and all that, you know, Onions. because they work it, they plough it, keep it soft, <laughs> keep it soft. It's beautiful, but mm. if you do, if you don't, you have trouble with it, you know. Mm. But uh, oh, there's all sorts of things. There's there's. Glenn was saying that the uh, the sand it took them a while to work out that you need to lime it. Yeah, well, uh, I can remember them, the ag department 
just remember them when I was probably eight or nine and we cleared a strip along along the side of the road there and they couldn't they the ag department come and said you should try lime on it and we got some lime it was wasn't good lime but oh it made that much difference but we had then a they had Yarloop clover they they, they found it down at Yarloop and they used to call it albino because it was the first clover with white seed and it was they found it down at Yarloop growing in a in the water okay and yeah it would grow in water and it would grow on on the other ground too I haven't seen anything grow quite like it since Do you still have what happened was they they somewhere how or other the there was wilt and scorch as they call it wilt and another disease was clover scorch and it would wipe the clover out and and that particular clover had no resistance to it whatsoever they have mm. since bred clovers with resistance to the scorch and the wilt and but it would be oh you know this high and the other stuff was about that they almost mm. double the other it was like a hybrid you know and but it was good stuff and i reckon we've worked that paddock that same paddock we've worked it this year for the first time for about 50 years mm -hmm. and i believe there'll be some of it some of that clover will come up be interesting we'll yeah, see yeah it'll be interesting to see yeah, yeah. now for people who, who don't know you've probably had a little bit to do with the banister downs dairy <laughs> which oh just once a day just a little yeah. yeah 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 which i understand is having its hundredth year anniversary as well this well it's all part of it isn't it yeah, yeah you know well i didn't know there was a connection between the naming of the town and the banister downs dairy it just happened at the same time i suppose how do you mean right it's no it's well we're where Bannister Downs is and the Bannister Downs dairy is on the land that the group settlers came yep. here to, you know, and that, all that land that it's on has been, uh, <coughs> been, uh, it's all, all part of it, you know, it's, yep. it's, it's been going and it's been up here. It's been up there for Matt and up there for Sue been up here for a long long time this this factory and all that yeah maybe we've been thinking about it you know and oh well I, it's still early days there's a lot of pitfalls and this year's very hard with the dry, dry yeah, yeah. Uh, very dry yes yeah, yeah very hard very hard to keep it keep everything going you know mm. and it's not finished uh, uh, I can see uh, some very hungry cows in another couple of months, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did I hear you just saying you ex the rain might not come till the it end of June? It may not come till the end of June. It, it, mm. I can remember at end of May one year that, oh, we got some rain, you know, but not much. And the, the real rain started at the end of May, 26th or something like that. And it wasn't very much fun. Another year, Glenn and us and Armstrongs and Bashfords are uh, all in the little triangle there, you know. Yep. <coughs> out 147, out where Wick was, you know, out, out, out that 147 group, it's at the end of Middleton Road. They got rain, they got rain like through here, but we never got it for a month later. Yeah, it was just a strip we didn't get. Every time it looked like raining, it'd go that way or this way. Yeah. I don't know whether it was uh, it was the good Lord or who it was. But it tends to be clumps of forest. Direct, yeah, direct that has a, I, I believe it's got a connection. Mm. And, it has to be yeah, out the, the lake. Out the lake where we've got the block out the lake on the on the bottom side of the of the Muir Highway. They get. Like if you get 20 mils on the top side, you'll get 50 on the bottom side. Uh -huh. It's like the, the, but that is, they did sort of follow a, a watershed. 
when they did the road because they did that a lot, you know, like they tried to stick to the the watershed, you know, and so as they didn't have water running across the road all the time. Yeah. And also Lake Muir is a big bare open area and that would have a, a, an effect on the falling and rising of the clouds, you know, because it's quite a big area there. Yeah. And, but, oh, it does all right out there, but it's not Northland. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know how long, bloody. Well, I suppose I'll be around for a few more years, I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I want to see the if the clover comes back up, because 50 is a long time for seed to Oh, it will. It, it will, stay. because when we... Well, did it always have tiny little pockets of it? Oh, you get quite a quite an area. It will come up. Yeah. Uh, we sort of, as we've gone on, we've bought the abandoned abandoned uh, group settler farms. You know. Yeah. And of course, they some of them had as much as fifty acres cleared. Some of them only had twenty five acres cleared, and it sort of went back to book. You know, it would. Uh, by the time we bought it, it was back to sort of like semi-cleared stuff uh, uh, going back to the forest, you know? Yeah. So we'd cleared those areas, ploughed them and, you know, never ploughed them that deep, but we'd plough it and reseed it. But the old clovers that were there in the early days, they would appear. You know, there, there was a lot of, not just sub-clover, but there was like hop clover and druphead clover and bird's eye and uh, alsike and all these different clovers that we didn't plant, but they'd appear in our hay crop. Did this you, was after 40 years. So where do you think they came from? They were in the ground. The seed was in the ground, and once, once we worked it up and moved it and that, up they came, put a bit of fertiliser there... And, you know, and oh, there was some beautiful stuff. Good. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, actually, how how long it will stay there. Have you ever seen any dingoes out there? I have. I've only seen them down Fish Creek. I saw. I've seen there was three down there, and they were down there for oh, probably well thirty five years ago. I was the last time I seen them down there. Okay. But. I've heard my mother and father and Les, they've seen them. Yep. Uh, they used to be right there near when they first came. There was no ruse. No ruse. Interesting. Yeah, there was no ruse. There was possums. There was uh, quokkas. There was thousands of quokkas. Yeah, I've heard people say there was a lot of quokkas. When they burnt, like my oldest uh, sisters and brothers... Their their fun was was killing quokkas with a with a air rifle. Well, uh, you yeah, because they they were that many of them. They just eat everything. Mm. Yeah, and they kill them with a would make a club out of the bottom of a tea tree stick. You know the knob on the, the root of the. And what about peppermints? Like I reckon the peppies in in Windy Harbour have only been there for I think they're all less than a hundred years old. Um. Yeah, but the fires, could you imagine the fires that would have gone through that area? Yeah. Well, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know how many fires went there. I don't know if there were any... We bill- don't know, and we don't even know how old the oldest carries are. Hmm. There's no way of proving it, because we've got one out home that's 35 paces around the base. Hmm. And and it, it it is far more ancient than all the other trees and it's never it was never that tall either because it must have grown when the forest was still open you know yep and we've got the perfect example is in in Dor- off out off Dorbney road you see trees this this big you know like a uh, half a meter or a meter through them at the base and there's others there that are, are three meters through and these these young ones are taller than the the others you know because yeah. they're times 
Do yeah. you remember when the forest was more open? Uh, it was more open when I was a kid. Yeah. But uh, it was even then. Oh, I'm was, talking about a, a canopy that, and you can walk under the... Yeah, well, uh, when uh, I know Dad, Dad got his first gun in 1929. And he also got a horse from Mottram's. They were the people, they used to bring cattle backwards and forwards yep. to the coast. And they told him, it's a good horse, it's not much good for cattle, but it's good to hunt off of because it, it allows you to shoot off it, you know? Okay. And oh, bad, of course, he, yeah, oh, I suppose he probably paid five bob for the horse or, or yep. dealt with a Somehow or other, you know, some the, Scotsman for it. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, he would have. They would have bought it somehow, you know. They would have. Uh, it would have, because there was no money. They had no money, mm. and uh, he was. I remember him telling me, you could go out the back in that same Jane Forest out the back, because yep. there was no roost coming in on the paddocks. So there was. By the, even by then, you know, they were they probably did, but they never went spotlighting or anything. Cause, but there wouldn't have been many. Anyway, they took the horse. He took he rode the horse out there with his gun, and the horse seen the roo. Dad shot the roo, and he said the next thing he remembered <laughs> was sitting on his ass with the stirrups in his feet. That had luckily unclipped, you know, as he right. threw him off, you know. Yeah. And he said, I got, got the roo, though. <laughs> but the horse didn't uh, like the sound of the gun. No, no, it only ran away, you know, short distance. But, you know, mm. I suppose uh, that was... But that was how he used to get, you know. And, like, from that time on, that's what... They ate a lot of roos. There was no rabbits here. They came later. And the deer? No, I think no they... deer. No you might have uh, been acquainted to a few of those too. Yeah, I've, oh, I am. Oh, out in the lake, there's a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, I've shot, like I've shot probably eight or ten. Yeah. You know, that, of course, when I first thought, I've got to shoot one. Yeah. I've got to shoot a deer and then I shot another one. But the last couple I shot, I went to them and I thought, what did I do that for? But you were going to eat it though. Oh, well, I tried one, but I'm not that fussed about it. It's not equal to kangaroo. Oh, right. Kangaroo, good young roo, is better to eat than any deer. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've been getting a few rabbits lately. Ray Collins has been trapping them down at... Down oh, at yeah, 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 yeah. And I've been going over there, knocking them on the head, and we had one, and then we had another one. I said, oh, I want two so I can buy it for Carol. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah. And um, they're good. They're great. We used like to... I like rabbit. When, like, in the 50s and that, then there was rabbits then, you know, like, well, in my age. And we used to get them, and, and the young ones, uh, like the three-quarter grown, my mother used to get them and uh, bake them, you know, yep. yeah, with a thing. Oh, they were beautiful. Prunes. We were putting prunes All in there. Sorts oh, of oh, tomatoes, onion, garlic. Well, however, she... Mm. she oh, she... she just could cook. I didn't know about rabbit. I mean, I've had. You gotta cook them for a fair while, but yeah. you use them the same as, like, if you got chicken and and did a chicken casserole. Yeah. You do a rabbit casserole, too, casserole yeah. with the same stuff. It's yeah. better, I reckon. I'm a big fan now. Yeah. Oh, some of the chicken is, you know, this farm chicken. Not. Not. Yeah, yeah, I know. You mm. mean uh, shed reared chickens? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never farm. see the sun. Uh, and the sun is the chicken. key to nearly everything. Everything. The <laughs> sun, everything. like even the feral feral pigs out the bush. Yep. They would be digging when they we me and Wally first started going out there shooting them and that. You'd see mm -hmm. they'd be digging on the south side. If there was a east west road, they'd always be digging on the on the south on the south side of the road where the sun come in and hit oh yeah different yeah. plants would be growing there their roots would be oh up. and and probably because of that there was probably more insects bugs probably more worms but that was would be where they'd be you know mostly on that side of the road yeah. on the anywhere where 
was so like you were saying about the open canopy. It was out, out there in the log bush. It was all open and the sun got in there a lot more, you know? No, I was talking about when there's a canopy above you, mm -hmm. but um, there's no understory and you could have walked you know, through there. They keep telling tales of this, how the bush was a lot more open. Yeah, well, there's an underneath. area behind our place that hasn't been burnt for 50 years. Yep. And, and that, that's pretty bloody thick still. <laughs> okay, so there but we go. talk, you know, like we talk 50 years. That, Thousands of years. Yeah, hundreds of years. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. You know, and they know. talk about carries being four to five to seven year, hundred years old. How do they know? They could be a thousand years old because when when those trees first started, say a thousand years ago, we didn't know what the what the what it was like here. Mm. And there wouldn't have been that much in the ground uh, for them to grow from, you know. They, of course, they make their they make their own food, don't they? Traditionally, with the bark and the and the insects and the yeah. bugs, and, and it would have taken millennia, many millennia, yeah. to um, build up. Yeah, you know, and they, they've built that soil themselves. You know, like those trees and that over the time. Well, they do. You can do a core and try and keep the thing, but when you chop it down, then you count the rings. They say, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, well, yeah. you can count the age of it count the age of a tree by the rings as a, as a rule. Yeah, but what happens if you've only got this much of the tree? Oh, but all the all middle... All the middle's the, gone. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Don't know. So, so how old is it? Mm. Yeah. I know they... We've uh, got that big one I was telling you about. Yeah. I reckon there'd be a hole in the middle, probably, oh, a metre and a half, two metres across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the cows have just started digging the, eating, digging the, digging the stuff out, playing and that, and eating the, licking the white ant where the white ants have been, and are they just, and they're just about through to it. Yeah. In years, when we were kids, we used to uh, have a big carry just up from the house, and we had our cubby underneath. Yeah. Uh, uh, a hole in the bottom. Yeah, like the holly butt. Yeah, but it was only only like a hole we had to crawl through. Dangerous as hell, because the, the the hole inside was way up, went away up the tree, yeah. and there'd be bits falling out of that rotten stuff and that. I'd be more worried about this. There'd be all sorts of insects and spiders in there, and you know, oh, you didn't worry about that when That's you were what kids. I would worry about. You know, you, yeah, but no, that and. Uh, uh, well, it was, it was wonderful, you know. The Mottrams had a tree out there uh, when they used to take the cattle that they, they, and they, they reckon they lived in it for, they'd live in it for a month or more in this like carry, a big hollow carry. Uh, I remember Ronnie one or Moore. two people. Hey? One or two. Hey? One Half or two of, people. Yeah, two or three people, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that was a big tree. I remember Ronnie Moore, who was the same age as me, he had... He, his brother took him in and showed him the tree, but it it burnt down. You know, got a light and burnt down. Yeah. But they had a all big set up there, a camp set up there for it. Inside the tree. Inside this big tree. Well, I suppose winter time they needed co cover and that. Yeah. And it did. I. We all our all over our farm used to be dead carries, rung bark ones, yeah. and now you won't even go near a dead carry uh, or dead trees. You walk under it when the wind's blowing. But we had to feed pigs and feed calves and that. And everything. You'd hear the wind whistling through the tops of the trees. Didn't seem to bother us. You yeah, know? well, it seemed, I think you'd have to be unlucky to be killed by a tree. It happens. It happens, especially if you're chopping one. You know? I know Les was feeding the pigs one time and he poured the milk in, and then he went across to the to the wheelbarrow to get some more milk. And a tree, uh, this limb about about big enough uh, to kill you, or it was about a foot through it, yeah. come down and fell parallel in the uh, splashed him with mud, frightened him nearly to death. He said, "Yeah, 
Well, it's an eye opener. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And another time, Beryl and Les. Beryl was about six or seven, and they were playing in the in an old ash bed of where they'd burnt a fire. Yeah. You know, it was wasn't a, it was old, but they were just pl playing in there. And she said, I don't know why, 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 but I grabbed his hand and ran. And the top of a tree came down right on the ash bed behind him. Okay. And, and <laughs> she said, <coughs> they ran to the fence. And then she said she pissed her pants with yeah. fright, you know. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, Paul Smith, Glenn's, one of Glenn's sons, he came and got me to spot from him he had to chop down a tree because just earlier a branch had missed him and he said he was at full extension, he wasn't a small bloke, yeah. running as fast as he could and just got out of the way yeah, yeah. and it shook him so much that instead of chopping a tree down alone, he yeah. said, oh, I want someone just to be there to, you know, just in case I'm wounded and not dead, <laughs> drag me out. Yeah, there's a lot of people, a lot of them, like, like Dave, Dave Kennedy was telling us that there's been, he, he was a faller and... But I he, know Dave, I've been out to your place with Dave. And he, anyways, he, the reason Dave is still firing all right and still alive is he takes, when he goes to cut a tree, he takes three or four minutes or more just looking, yep. checking everything. Yep, yep I've seen no, that. And, and some of them that, that have, some of the others were whippy and cut the tree down, you know? Yep. Now I've seen Dave address a golf ball and he'll... Look that way, walk to the side, yeah. look around, get there, wiggle up, mm. and then take his time, mm -hmm. slow draw back, and mm -hmm. then whomper straight down the guts. Yeah, he's pretty good. And he can drop a tree, you know. Yeah, straight he's down pretty the guts good too. like that. He ta it ta it does take his time, but it, he's not not afraid to tell you how clever he is either about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, anyway, that's Dave. Well, he, he's pretty good. Actually, Glenn said. Um, you should get that guy there, Robert Daubney. He knows uh, he can walk around a bunch of cows, come back and tell you why you shouldn't buy those six and mm -hmm. for each individual reason. Well, that's through. Uh, I'm only half as good as what Wick was. Wick, that yeah. Wick was Mavis's husband, you know? And he was mm -hmm. my brother. He was just incredible. I was only telling Robin, uh, Wick told his daughter, the this. She come down for the hundred, you see, and they camped out home out on the uh, place I picked for them. And uh, I was telling him, uh, Robin, that Wick came to our place and he bought the two most uh, oh years ago. Two mo he didn't buy them. We owed him a couple of you know. So he took these two. And one was they called. I said to Robin, one was called was Spotty, and the other was a. Oh, I can't remember, but the two of them, you know, it got that 20, 30 percent of his cows in his herd were, and they were the two most, they, they finished up, you know, like he had that breed, that line for years. And Spotty, Spotty's were big cows, you know, great big cows. And I went there one day and he said, oh, just the bloke I want to see, give us a hand, this cow's got milk fever and I can't get into the vein. We'll have to roll her over. If she was a big cow, and usually if you you roll a cow on its side and sit on its head, they they can't get up. You know, if you keep that head down, usually. of course the head is the first thing that comes up. But this was a big, strong cow. Well, I sat on her head, and she just picked me up and threw me over there about three yards away. Mm. You know, and he big laughed. Cows. He thought it was a hell of a joke. <laughs> Older brother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would. <laughs> but oh no, no, he he was very good. But you just learn because you know, like as you go along, if you make a mistake, you pay for it. Mm. You know, it's yeah. it's a kind of, kind of common. <laughs> no point in making a mistake if you don't learn from it. Yes, it's uh, it, yeah. it's a bit different these days. Yeah, now, yeah. I know you blame somebody else. Oh, that's always gone on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, there seem to be less consequences. 
sometimes. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. A lot of well, a lot of the stuff we do, like you know, maybe some of the stuff I do in here, it's not life or death. Yeah. You know, so there's. Um, Oh well, that didn't work. I forgot to press record on the button. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll we'll do it again. Yeah, yeah. Or I might not be able to do it again. That's but right. Yeah. Without, you don't suffer that much except for your own mental anguish. Yeah, yeah I know. But um, but uh, yeah, I think while humans are on Earth, they still have to learn from their mistakes. Should, yeah, and of course you have to. The further back, hundred years ago, and that's what this is all about. Yeah, yeah, you make, yeah. It was more serious. Mm-hmm. You know, you make a mistake with, um, but even these days with a box of matches, um, you can make uh, some serious mistakes with a box of matches. <laughs> and, uh, I've never, I never have. Yeah. You know, I've lit fires. I've, I can remember going with a fire lighter away out the back and all around, but at the right time of the year, and it that that. One particular time, I can remember the following year, uh, old Jim Loverock came in because he was the forestry man, you know, and they used to do, boy, oh, he came into home, he knew, I think he knew that, you know, we were, must have been involved in it, but he said, we, the fire got away on the boys because they used to do control burning. They had yep. shit all to fight it with, but uh, this was in springtime or something like that. How far back do you think? That would have been well before I was married, anyway. Okay. Anyway. So the anyway, fire... and he came in and he said, "Oh," he said, "The boys, the fire got away on the boys," and the next thing, it ran into the this country that somebody had burnt uh, and stopped and stopped. Yeah. And he said, oh, "Some some some bastard had burnt it," he said, <laughs> and. Uh, I said, well, that was good. Where was that, Jim? You know, <laughs> and, uh, I knew exactly where it was because that was the one place that I did light. It was mainly did it for protection for us because it was, you know, like we stopped a fire out home. Uh, Clem Collins, uh, Jack Randall and Les and Dad and, and me and Colleen and... You know, we were only 12, 13 or 12, 13, you know, mm. and we stopped it on, on the road by With burning back and... Wet sacks, peppy branches? Yeah, peppy branches off trees. We never used bags. We always used, just grabbed a... a and, and you can put out an enormous amount of grass fire. Mm. You get the strongest bloke has the biggest bush. And he goes along first, and the others come behind him, and he just beats the fire down, puts most of it out, and the odd bits that he he doesn't stop. The others behind him put mop up. Mop up, yeah. yeah. Because they never had slip on units or. 13 years old and fighting fires. Oh, yeah, oh, even younger than that, I think we were. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, when. Rochi, uh, uh, when, uh, 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 one of the Roaches got married, he married Clem Collins' sister. Kuta Roach? No, way behind him. Uh, Kuta Roach's uncle it was. They got married and Dad came into town to say the fire will be in the back of our place and, and anybody that could come out, this was, could, uh, would be, very helpful, you know, because mm-hmm. it was on a quite a face and, and going to be coming in in the, and then there was some bad weather as well. We, but we put it out, you know, the Les and Wick and whoever was around doses? went down along the river and cut down anything that was going to let the fire come across. Of course, that held the fire back and then it come in about, it come in uh, with the easterly, and and not not a real wind, it was just breeze, and it came in heading west, you know, and then those those few things they did delayed it enough that by the time it got to the paddock, the wind had stopped and dropped and went round to the southwest, oh, it went and back onto itself. Yeah, yeah, 
So but when it, when it goes down to the river, how do you mean like the so Barara? Yeah, and because in the uh, you know, like there be any <clears> dead <throat> trees or things like that that because a fire usually Northley fire was different, but usually a fire will come down the hill to the to the river yeah. and it's damper and colder and and it doesn't burn as quick. Yeah. And if you can hold it up a bit, which we did, uh, we held it up for an hour or so, you know, sort of like, but then it cranked up after. And, oh, I reckon I was about, there was three of us, three of us kids and Joan, our oldest sister from Manjima. Yeah. And we were there when it came out on the paddock and we all had bushes and we beat it out, stop it from getting into the high grass on the next paddock, you know, because yeah. the, the paddock that it was coming into had been mown, cut for hay, and it cleaned up, and there was only whiskers on it, you know. And that wouldn't burn very quickly. Well, it depends. If the weather's right, it'll just skip across it, but, yeah. you know, with the wind coming back, it was burning back, you see. Okay. So There's lucky... Lucky oh, day. lucky, but and skill. we made our luck, didn't yep. we, you know? Took advantage. And, and the paddock was covered in dead carries, and they just went round it with a, uh, or three or four of them had knapsack spray, you know? Yep. And they just went round, Used they were there once. before the tree could get a light, you know, and just put out the, yep. uh, there was probably, oh, on that paddock there would have been 80 or 100 trees, mm-hmm. And, but they they had run a cultivator mark down, so there was probably only 20 or so trees that they had to put out. But some of them won't get, didn't get a light anyway, you know. But, but it was all quiet and done for. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, oh, yeah. Did the 2015... But, like, nowadays you hear of them, houses burning and all that sort of thing. It didn't happen. Mm. You know? And... You go back further when they, when the group settlers come, they didn't have a fire season. They burnt it when they thought it would be all right. And, and like, why now? Most of the slash down, cut down country had all been burnt through the best part of the year when it would burn the most. And that was slash down was anything up to nine inches was cut down, was chopped down and all the scrub and everything, and it would be sometimes 10 foot deep. Of, that's a lot of work. Oh, well, they, that's how they cleared. You know, that was how they cleared. They, they, they'd go through and cut, chop it all down. Oh, Inchley, Bill Inchley, that was next to, across the road from us, he slashed down 25 acres in 23 days. And, uh, and like peppies and... Oh, everything. And everything. Everything down small and up to the big scrub. And what for eventually, just for pasture? Yeah, 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 yeah. To, to, <coughs> then they'd, burn, they'd get... The, some of them, there's a patch on Oliver's place, which is, or Inchley's, across from uh, where Valerie lives, you know? Yeah. There's a patch there that's never had a plough. Never been ploughed. It was, uh, Dad said, they, the burn was so good, they sowed the seed in the ash. Yeah. And mind you, underneath that ash was pretty good ground too. And and it just, the pasture just took over, you know. I suppose they would have gone over it and pulled out the odd stump and that sort of thing. But it still, it has never been touched. It's as... It was. You wouldn't know it though, you know. But it's wet country and the cows work it. Winter time, the cows pug it up and it flattens out in the summer and, you know, it's sort of, it is work. The ground is work, but it's worked by the animals. Okay. Probably had some other sort of question <coughs> to ask you. 100 years. 100 years? Yeah, what are these? Um, I, I still don't know. It's a puzzle to me, and I've never been able to work it out. Dad came out here, and he lived in the sh- in a shack down on the farm, 
but I still don't know what he ate for the first 12 months, you know, 15 months. What food he had. He couldn't, there was no room. Quarters. No, no, he, he never, they never had time to catch them. Mm. You know, they were, they would have, and they would have been scratching, like they had to dig a well and get water, pour, draw water. And but they must have had, he must have, they must have had eggs or got something. They must have been a food delivery, surely. Has any of your, um, uh, you know, winter creeks or we have yeah uh, winter dried creeks. up um, lately. Well, we've only got winter creeks. We've got uh, not we on our, all our farm, even though it's lowland and anyway, we haven't got any permanent creeks. Right, are they still flowing in winter? Well, they flow in the winter, all right, but uh, uh, you know. It has climate change has come. There's no doubt about that. It's it's drier than it was. Mm. Yeah. So here's one question: What's the most surprising change to Northcliffe you've witnessed? Hmm. hmm. The most surprising change. There's been a lot of changes, you know, through the years, mm. Mm. especially the farming side. Most disappointing is the dying back of the shops, you know, like the, there used to be three or four or more shops, but now since travel and as may, like you can go to Manjum up and go shopping, when we were kids, that would be like a once a month thing if, uh, if you got up there, yeah. you know. I, don't, I think I was probably 15 before I went to Manjum. Right. You know. Yeah, Glenn and his family too, they didn't travel. No, 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 no. He stayed here. And, and like, uh, Tibby Richards had the shop. Yeah. He was, he was a good bloke. He, people got him on tough times. He and would shit. support them through, carry them, you know. Yeah. And he'd carry them and, and knowing that they would pay him back. And I think Brian... Richards, his son, said that he told my mother because he used to go out and and talk to to uh, my mother all the time. You know when he did these rounds with the fuel and everything, and he told her that none of the people that that Tib supported, you know, give that carried for might be for three months, might be for six months. None of them didn't pay in the finish. They, they, everybody paid in the finish. Yep. You know? As you'd hope. Yeah. <coughs> it was a bit different later when uh, the mill started and all that, because some of the people, they never, they, they, they would do a, flit, a, night, a midnight flit, you know, mm. and owe money, but they never had any chance of getting that money. So, I can remember in my, anyway, when I was at school, the kids from the mill, you know, and they were getting, the, the mill workers were getting between 12 and 14 pound a week. Yeah. Well, it's not much, is it? Well, I've got nothing to compare it to. I, I yeah, don't but know. you imagine um, it, it would be, it wouldn't have been, even then it wasn't much, you know, for a family. And a lot of the, well, uh, there's quite a few of the mill kids would come and uh, come to school with bugger all. You know, there was bugger all food and that. It was it was bloody tight there. Mm. It sounds uh, obviously it would have been hard. That was like the yeah. Oh, it was uh, the farm kids. They always the thing with the farm kids. They always had food. You yeah. Know? Well, always going to have food. Yeah, the farm kids are. Maybe not shoes. No, we didn't have shoes. Didn't want shoes. Uh, what would you want shoes for? They only get wet. <laughs> that was the thing. Most yeah, we were getting, it was wet for a lot longer time of the year. You yeah, know? I think we were getting nearly two metres of rain, and now we're getting just over one. 60, when I was going to school year after year, one per, uh, where, where, uh, where Gwyns live out there, the bloke oh, there, yeah. 
kept rain gauge. He reckoned he got 86 inches, yeah. and they got about 70 in Northlip. Yeah. That was oh, sometime in the 50s. Mm. Don't know what years or anything, but uh, but the like in, in, even in my time on the farm, we used to put disc up in February, ready for plant our oats in March, and they'd be up and away. There was always moisture in the ground. Yeah. Now, come after there's none, no moisture in the ground. You know, it mm. it it's got a year by year thing. Have you been down to Windy lately? I haven't been down to Windy, no. Mm. I reckon there's a lot of dead trees. I Does know around look? our farm, through some of the creeks, this, this right now, there's, there's down the creeks that are, are normally got, like you said, I said, we haven't got any permanent creeks, but there's a lot of those creeks, there's water going, running underneath. Down, down underneath, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's stopped mm. because there, a lot of the trees the surface feeders especially, are dying, are dead. Yeah, I thought, um, you must have read my mind, because, yeah, just after Chuddle Up and going uh, to North... Those ro where those rocks are and granite... Yeah, and you look to the left and there's a little bit of a... Uh, if you're going down, I look to your left and there's a bit of a clearing there. Yeah, yeah. And then there's about three of these little spots within a kilometre, and I thought that taken the spraying from the side of the road, gone in there and sprayed all in there because mm. it's all all dead in there. Just, mm -hmm. But then I think, oh, actually this is probably more natural, which is mm. scarier. Mm. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just a bit shocking to, to, um, to watch. Uh, as far as North and the, well, what you, you asked before about what was the, most surprising thing, was oh, it? Yeah. Or, or disappointing, or surprising, well, surprising. Or whatever. I think when when the mill was running early was good. You know, it was the forest was there for it, and they and clear felling was the biggest bug thing that happened, yeah. worst thing that happened to the area. Yeah. You know. Because once they moved into that, they got the chip mill up there. There was, like, when the mill was going, there was money coming into Norfolk. Once yeah. they got that chip mill up there and they carved it all up the road, what did we get out of our forest that surround us? Nothing. The, the townspeople, the, you know, it was, was a big step backwards for the town. Mm. And, or not only the town, but a lot of the people around it, you know? Yeah. And uh, favourite places to visit? Uh, and did you ever go to any town dances? Yeah, yeah, I used to. I used yeah. to go to all the dances if I could. Everyone we've interviewed have said the same thing. They, um, the town dances were obviously very popular. Yeah, yeah, well, they were the meeting place, you know, they yeah. were the get togethers, the. You know, before my, I, I don't ever remember seeing any fights when, you know, when I was going. But before my time, I, uh, I, my brothers and that used to go, and there was always a fight at the dance. You know, there was always a, you know, stoush of some somebody. I mean, like one bloke, old Vic Jones. I remember Vic Jones saying. Wick or one of them come home and was telling us after the dance these two blokes were fighting for uh, over this one girl yeah. and they got stuck into it and old Vic come along what are you silly pair of buggers doing come and have a drink she's gone home with somebody else <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you know it was it was never there wasn't grudges held or anything like that you know the, the fights were there and then and finished with and that was it, you know? Okay. But then after, like, as the, I suppose it's just different eras, you know? Like, fighting was sort of like, what well, didn't happen, you know? No, well, you're too busy struggling to survive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Trying to put food no, on the table. No, no, the dancers were good though, you know? You, mm. you, the, yeah. In the Pioneer Museum there, they've got a little board and it's got a chalkboard and the Gay Gordon and the 
quick step and Fox trot or whatever. And, uh, uh, Gay Gordons, Gypsy Tap, Pride of Aaron. Yep. Iron Dance. Is that, well, so how did you meet Alison? I saw Alison at a dance up here when, when uh, she was about fifteen or sixteen. You know, I must have been seventeen so or eighteen. You it was know, at a dance. <laughs> yeah, she was at a at a dance, a ball it was, uh -huh. and she'd come down with her brothers and family. You know, her sister, her and her sister were very close always, yeah. hard inseparable. And I I knew her sister, but uh, of course I. Was Pretty bloody shy and bushy, and I still am. But you know, uh, uh, and uh, girls, you have to keep away from them. You know, they, they were terrible things. You know, frightening they were, <laughs> but you're still drawn to them <laughs> somehow, naturally. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I seen her there, and then she. Uh, went that way, you know, sort of, even a couple, one time I remember taking a bloke out to their house and thought, oh, I'd take him out, and I was playing football, you know, and he was going out with Elba, the older sister, and I took him out, and, oh, you're coming in, but I was too terrified to go in, in case, you know, I didn't want to meet him to see anybody, so anyway, that, that all, all things like that. I took out two or three other girls that looked like Alison. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I got engaged with a school teacher. Then I, we, I broke it off because uh, religion was her thing, mm. not mine. Mm. Uh, and as strong as she felt for it, I felt that strong against it, you know? Anyway. Uh, then about a month or two later, I went to the dance in Manji, or uh, I went to the, to the pub in Manji actually, and there was Robert Minchin, David Walters and, and uh, Preston, the school teacher, Ian Preston, and me. We were having a drink there. And who should come in but Alison? I hadn't seen her for four years. Alison and, and the nurses from the hospital. Okay. Yeah. And I said to the boys, I said, well, that's Alison Kemp over there. If she goes out to that dance at Ding Up, I'll be taking her home. Yeah. And I don't want any bullshit from you lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and the rest was history sort of thing. Because she objected to having three other people in the car. <laughs> but then I talked to her. Talked her out, you know, and said, It'll, I can guarantee on my life that they'd be terrified to even speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd already pre threatened them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. And we, we, I got, went and got her up for a dance, yeah. and we just fitted together dancing, you know, it was just, it was just like that. It was, it was, it was beautiful to dance with her, and it always was. Excellent. Yeah. So, and then you had Matt and Rachel. Yep. Right. Well, I did. Um, got a quick, a quick little word with Hayden. Did um, you really? Yeah. Because he was in the tractor parade. Yeah. And um, it was pretty, pretty ruby. Yeah. Matt, Matt was on the uh, big wide one. Yeah, yeah. And um, Hayden was on a little, but 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 quiet. Yeah. Quite a yeah. quiet little tractor. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he still enjoys going to the coast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, he travels everywhere. Yeah, he's been through all tracks and roads yeah. and everything. Well, Jim, anyway. Rachel's in uh, Czechia. Prague. Yeah, in Prague. Czech Republic. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hopefully she'll be coming home. Good. You excited to see her? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. It yeah. goes without saying. You just... I've got to find, if she comes, I've got to find her a place to stay. I don't know, live, you know? Yep. I'll find something somewhere. Between us all, we'll find something. Good. Yeah, she's good. She, she'll come home. Good. Where are we? Oh, yeah. I've just about had enough. Yeah, I think so. And 
thank you so much. You've done really well. And uh, uh, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we went everywhere. That's good.